Good morning everyone and welcome to this morning's CAD chat. Uh, today's topic is about data management, learning the advantages to having data management. I'm Wayne Matus, I'm application engineer with Progression Technologies. Contact information is wayne at progressiontech.com and my extension is 295 if you want to contact me directly. Okay, general housekeeping, the webinar control panel Robin our control panel is where you'll access your questions. Uh, there's a icon at the upper right hand corner, red background, that's to expand and collapse C control panel. Again, as always, I do ask that you ask your questions at the end of the session, and I'll answer them at that point in time. Uh, first thing you need to know, I guess, is what is PDM? Well, PDM stands for Product Data Management, and it's used to organize, control, and define all important engineering information. It allows sharing of downstream departments such as purchasing, manufacturing, quality assurance, control, secures, and facilitates the daily work in progress WIP of your engineering R&D design departments. So basically it's a file management system for engineering documents. It allows you to control access to the files so certain people will have read access only and other people have read write access to files. And it also will mimic your engineering process, how, how documents get from somebody's head from the R&D department to production drawings where you can produce a product. Four pillars of a PDM system gives you ability to search and sort files, control change and sharing, secure vaulting and revisioning and track references. Track references is probably one of the most important ones. It should be able to track references up and down made from and where used so that way you'll know know what drawings or excuse me what parts are used to make what drawings and and then also in an assembly environment what parts are used in what assembly or what parts are used in in the other direction where what assembly is the part used in. Uh, today we're going to talk about the SolidWorks data management solutions that are available to you. Uh, but we're not going to talk about the ANOVA PLM. Uh, that's the life cycle management. We're not going to get into that much detail. But we'll start at the bottom of the tree. Uh, the bottom one is SOLIDWORKS EXPLORER. SOLIDWORKS EXPLORER is really a personal file management system. It's really not for engineering groups. It's for individual users to mainly it's used to keep from breaking references. So if you rename a part or you move a part to another folder when you open up assembly it's not going to have you browse for that particular file. Work group management is your SOLIDWORKS workgroup PDM program. Uh, this is for engineering groups at a single location where you maybe got up to 10, 10 different engineers, designers, draftsmen working at one location. And then the cream of the crop is our SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM. It's an enterprise data management solution. Uh, when I say enterprise I mean it's a global solution where if you have locations that have sites all over the world and you can have what's called a replicated vault at each one of those locations so users will be getting their files locally not from some server across the, the WAN. Uh, today I'm going to demo the three products uh, using SOLIDWORKS Explorer with Windows Explorer to to manage your files, I guess you could say, not really manage them, but do a better job than just Windows Explorer. And then we'll use SOLIDWORKS Workgroup PDM and then show you SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM. Okay, so here is SOLIDWORKS Explorer. This file right here, this three-finger jaw, is one part 
uh, of an assembly and notice kind of pretend that this PDM demo folder here is actually my working folder and then underneath that I can set up folders to organize my files and this grabber assembly is what I'm going to be working on now and show you how you can do revisions in SolidWorks Explorer so this part right here this three finger jaw part I need to make some notches to do a better job of gripping so what I'm going to do I'm going to do a pack and go on this and I want to include drawings I don't think there are any drawings in this but I want to include drawings I want to save it in this same folder but I'm going to add a suffix to the file and let's make it dash revision underscore b will be the new file name and I could do a selective replace but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to close this and hit my save button so now I've got this new part created Now I can do it here, or I could do it inside of SolidWorks. I'll do it here. I'm going to replace the three finger jaw. And now it's going in and searching where that three finger jaw is used. And right now it's used in this training folder. There's an assembly in there in the training folder. And then there's also assembly in my working folder right here. But I do not want to use or change the where used in the the assembly that's in the training folder. I just want to do it in this working folder. And what do I want to replace it with? I want to replace it with the one I just created, the three finger jaw rev B part. But only replace it in this assembly right here. Do not replace it in that assembly there. And how it found those files when it did the search is under my options and then references where used. So right now I've got it set to search in this training folder and this my working folder right here. So it's looking in those place, places for all the assemblies that that part may be used in and now I'm going to open up in SolidWorks the the grabber assembly and a quick control Q for three build now I can see that that part is truly the rev B part so I'm going to open it up in its own window and do some quick cutouts in it and save this and I can close exit out that now you can see that my grabber assembly has has the notches in it and I'll save that now in reality I should have revised the assembly too and also in this SolidWorks Explorer we can do a where used here so let's do a where used on the the grabber assembly and again it's searching and it's finding that it's used in this mini grab assembly now this is only going one level up it's not going to the top level assembly but if I open up this this assembly or 
before I'll just open up the top level assembly just to show you that. Uh, and also we can do a references on the top level assembly. And again it's finding all the parts that are needed for this assembly. Now this one goes all the way down so you can see that this is the scroll down there's the bar assembly. The bar assembly is using the mini grab assembly. The mini grab assembly is using the main body assembly and also the the grabber assembly and the grabber assembly is now using the three finger jaw rev B part file. So if I do open this up in in SolidWorks you can see shortly that it's got the jaws with the with the notches in it. So that's how you can do revisions in in SolidWorks Explorer. To get files into into your working folder I can do it multiple ways. I could do it. I'll use Windows Explorer, SolidWorks Explorer here, uh, and search on my C drive in my SolidWorks training folders, my SolidWorks Workgroup PDM, CAD Editor, Lesson Two Exercises, Vice Grip. And I'll do the the vice grip assembly, and I'm going to do a pack and go on this. Also, want to include all the drawings, and it found all the drawings again using that same search locations. So it found the seven drawings, I think, or six drawings. And where do I want to save these to? I'm going to browse and put them in that working folder. And that is on the E drive. And PDM demo. And gone too far put it in student projects in the tool vice folder and save them there so now all of those files are in in that folder Collapse a few of these items and go to that student project folder. There's my tool vise. And, and here's all the files. Now I'll say I really don't want all these files in the same folder. I can move a file. So for example the saddle. I want to move the saddle part. It did a quick search and the saddle part is used in all these but again I don't want to use under change of references for the for the ones in the training folder. I only want to use it in my working folder and I want to browse to the folder And I want to create a subfolder underneath tool vice. Call it structure. And now the folder name is good here. It's good here. And 
and now that part is in the structure subfolder and I'll do the same thing to the to the drawing put the drawing with the folder and it's searching and it didn't find any so just browse to that subfolder and OK that and OK this so now that the saddle drawing is in the same folder as the saddle part and just open up the tool vice drawing and there's the tool vice drawing so find references for it it's looking for all the files in this working folder and there's the saddle part in the in that structure subfolder so I've got everything in the system all the links are good so I'm able to work on them now so that is how you work with SolidWorks Explorer and Windows Explorer to to manage your files it's not really a true PDM system but it does allow you to to work without breaking references okay the next part of the demo is the workgroup PDM so I want to turn on my workgroup PDM add-in and let's see where's my workgroup there's my workgroup now this is a true PDM system so it's going to ask me to log in to the vault and I'll log in as Jim put in a password for Jim and here's just a question do I want to link my SolidWorks access to my workgroup PDM access and I'm going to say no less so basically that would so I've got a file owner if I'm the owner of the file it will give me read or excuse me read write access to the file but if I'm only not the owner of the file then it's going to just open it up read only access let me refresh my vault view so basically my file explorer task pane looks a little bit different the upper part of my task pane is the my local and the bottom part is my my vault my vault has the ability to i can do a search in here and it'll search the database for for information i've got a simple search which is here where you pick the field you want to search on and put in the value or the advanced search is where you can put in multiple values with and or or conditions on there here i just need a simple search i just want to search for a description and value of top and i'll generate a report and this will give me a list of all the files that have in description top it even found a folder with the top for a printer uh, if I click on the file it will highlight it in the vault I can also take the file right here check it out get document information this gives me more information about the file here's the pro custom properties that are in the file what file properties they are mapped to in workgroup PDM history and notes this is another thing that a good PDM system will do it will do audit trail who did what when and where and why to the files references this is so this assembly is using this assembly this assembly and that part file now this will only go one level deep so it's not going to find sub assemblies and sub assemblies or parts and sub assemblies uh, where used this assembly is not used anywhere also we have revisions in here we don't have to rename files so it will create the revisions for us based on our revision scheme uh, there's a picture of it the view will launch e-drawings so you can see what you're opening before you really open it and 
then I'm going to go ahead and open up the there's also a preview window in here so if I click on a file it will preview it with the bitmap image and I'm going to open up check out the drawing and what this will do it will open up a dialog box and list all the files that are needed in that assembly to allow me to open them up I could take ownership of any file that I have permissions to take ownership of or have right access to and I do want to get local copy and what this will do it will actually copy it from the vault to my local working folder and then I'm working locally so whenever I hit my save button I'm saving local and not to the network only when I check in a file will I will I be copying it from a local drive to the vault and updating the file or creating a new version of the file in the vault so I'll go ahead and open this up and I can close out this dialog box I'm not needed with it I'll close out my search And I'll close out this preview. If I do file or find references, see so these, this is my working folder. It copied the file down to that working folder there. Uh, and just like before, we need to make a revision to this, this part right here. But if I open this up right now, it's warning me I'm about to make changes to the read-only document. And if I go to this folder right here, this gripper folder that the file is in, in the vault, by looking at this colored icon, it tells me that somebody else has this file checked out. And we can set up the system so that we can see who has the file checked out. So Bob White has this file right here checked out, so I can't make any changes to it. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch users. Now normally you wouldn't do this. And I'll log in as Bob White. So now I'm Bob. And that same warning, I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, and it's giving me a warning here about read write access since I was logged in as GM who did not have write access I'm now in is Bob I do have write access to the file you can see up here and if you would have noticed before you could have seen it it actually changed from read to write and I'll do the same thing I did on the other one do a cut extrude and now I'm able to save the file because I have write access to it and I can check in the active document also noticed here uh, the folder structure here this bulk load projects it's grayed out so that means I do not have any access to that that folder uh, the orange means I have read only access but if you look here I can have subfolders with different permissions so here I've got add write access to the ROV folder but not to the general projects folder and I don't have to be real critical this part is already in the vault so I can just right click anywhere in the vault and I can check in active document and what this will do it will copy my changes from a local hard drive and save it in the vault it will automatically increment the revision according to our revision scheme uh, we also have something in here called life cycles life cycle is kind of like a workflow but it's a little bit limited but anywhere we can kind of tell it where in our engineering process we want it to place we're going to place this one in our released state but notice now it, it would automatically bump the revision to 02 or dash 02 and we can have the different revision schemes depending on where it is in our process so when I change it to released it's going to change it to where it's bumping the the primary revision and skipping the secondary so now it'll come in at 
at revision A and add a little note here for my history. Do I want to retain ownership? No, I'm ready. I'm done with this one. So I'm going to uncheck retain ownership. And now you can see that icon is great out here. And I'll just check it in. Now if I go to that folder, you can see I've still got the, the grabber assembly checked out, but the three finger jaw part is checked in, uh, deleted ownership as I checked it in, and there's a file, and notice I did not have to change the name of the file because the PDM system is managing the revisions for us. So the next step is to show you how to get files into the vault, and to do that I'm going to log out again switch users I'm going to change to student student one put in the password for student one and the read write access is changed into a different user now and I'll just close out and not save any of the changes there And I'm going to open up inside of SolidWorks. I'm not in the PDM yet. Enterprise PDM that is. And I'm going to go to that training folder and open up the assembly here. Similar to how I did it in the uh, in the first part of the demonstration. exercise tool vice and I'll open up the tool vice assembly and here to get it into the vault I will need to select or it's easier if I select the folder I want to put it in into the vault and I want to select the folder right click and check in after the document I want to also include the drawings and how do I want to look for the drawings well I also want to look in in the SolidWorks search pass hopefully you're familiar with the SolidWorks search pass and it'll go through there and search for drawings and it found seven what project it put it in it'll put it in the tool vice project put a little note in here for history purposes I could fill out some other custom properties I'll do that later and I'll just I'll just check them in and it just warned me hey these I've got some files in here that are missing numbers and descriptions do I want to put in that tool by solder yes So now it's opening up the files, the drawing files. So it's got a hex, or I'll back up a little bit. With SolidWorks files, you actually have to have the files open in SolidWorks to be able to, to check them in because it's going in there and 
and doing a rebuild on them to make sure everything is good when it checks them in. So there's all my files in that tool vice folder and I am still the owner of the files. If I have permissions I can create subfolders or subprojects. And when you create in Wargroup PDM, when you create projects, you also have to give the the project a name and a description. I'm going to use them the same. It doesn't have to be the same. They could be different. Uh, now the sub project will have the same permissions as the the root project. But anyway, there's my sub structure. And that saddle part, I want to move it to that folder. So I want to change projects for the saddle. I also want to include the, the drawings. So I'm going to include the children and move it to the structure subfolder. So now you can see the little hyperlink symbol on the icon. That tells me that it's that the part and the drawing are now in this structure subfolder. So that is how you work in SolidWorks Workgroup PDM to manage your files. It also does a real good job of managing revisions for you. And next is going to be Enterprise PDM. So I'm going to turn off my Workgroup and turn on my Enterprise. Uh, to work in Enterprise PDM, it's real simple. I do a file open and in Enterprise PDM you'll have your your blueberry here. PDM is the vault I'm going to be working in and basically this is a copy of files from the vault on my local computer that I'll be working on. So just like Workgroup PDM I'm working local and I'm going to log in. I'll log in a designer put in my password and then once I'm into the vault my in this case my open dialog box will change so this actually looks a lot like SolidWorks or excuse me Windows Explorer Windows Explorer is the interface that you use when you're working in work or enterprise PDM I need to open up a file but I don't remember a lot about it uh, but directly from this file open dialog box I can run a search. There's a SQL database behind this product. So I'm going to search that SQL database for in the description field for something called top and start my search. So there's an end cap. See I've got an end cap. A where used tab down here. So this end cap is used to make this drawing. It's also used in this assembly. That assembly is used in that assembly, that assembly is used in that assembly, and that assembly is used in that assembly. So it goes all the way down, not just a single lever, level. Uh, there's another part. This assembly. Now the other files, I guess I've already had got them local, but this file right here I do not have local, so it's actually just in on demand copied it from the server down to my computer and it's not used anywhere if I do a bill of material so here's the bill of material for this assembly there's all the components and how many of them I need for this contains tab is basically what files are needed for this assembly here's the different versions of it so it's just like workgroup PDM we have versions of files well, I'll back up. This one's a little bit different. We've got versions and revisions here. There's uh, the data card for the file. So this is the, the metadata about the file. And here's the, the top assembly that it found or searched on and found. Here we also have a preview. Now I've got my preview set up to, to preview in a bitmap image, but this can be set up to, to preview in need drawings and I'll just open up the top level assembly here and here's 
a dialog box, a list of all the files that are also going to be opened up when I open up this assembly. And do I want to check any amount so I could check out the top level and any other components that I have permissions to check out. Here I'm not going to check it out, I'm just going to open it up. So I'll hit my cancel button. And just like we did twice before, we need to put some notches on this three finger jaw. So I'm going to open up this three finger jaw in its own window. And it's giving me a warning here when I open it up. Hey, I um, only have read only access to it. Uh, but even though I have read only access to it, I can still work on the file. So I'm going to do the same old thing, put my notches in here, another warning about read only. And I made my changes. I do have, I don't have it checked out, but I have permission to check it out. So directly inside of SolidWorks, I'm going to check it out. And this will give me right access to the file so the read only is no longer there. So I can now save my changes. And this again is saving it to my local hard drive. When I'm done with my changes, then I can check the file into the vault and it'll copy it from my local drive to the vault. And when I checked it in, I said, do not retain ownership or keep it checked out. So now it's back to read only. I can in, or I'll back up a little bit, inside of Enterprise PDM we have workflows. Workflows basically gives you an engineering process similar to, to the life cycle but much more powerful. So here I want to submit this part for approval. And I could put a little note here. I could also set this up to where we would send out notifications to, to people to let them know that, hey, there's something needs to happen to this file. Now, normally I wouldn't be able to do this, but for demonstration purposes, to speed up the process from having to, not having to log in and out of different users, I'm going to go ahead and pass the approval. And make it good. And here it automatically bumped the revision to revision A for me. And that was done through the workflow itself. And I'm going to close out. And I'm not going to bother saving the top level assembly. But now if I go to to PDM and if I do a search and let's search for three in the file name itself. So there's all the parts and assemblies and drawings that have three in the file name. And there's my three finger jaw. Now here I want to show you a little bit about this. Uh, we could also get previous versions in here, but notice here I'm going to get version. So here's the different versions and here's the revision. You can set up the system so that people can only see revisions. So for example, the manufacturing or purchasing would only be able to see revisions. They couldn't see the work in progress. So okay, how do we get files into the vault?
and here I think I'll just open up in the training folder again open up that same folder to be consistent same same tool vice assembly And here I'll just do a pack and go here. There's other different ways of doing this. But I'll do the pack and go, include drawings on it. Or do I want to place the files? I want to place them in the vault. And I want to put them in that same folder structure. And I'm going to go ahead and close out this assembly. If I go to Windows Explorer and go into my vault. There's a tool vice there's all the folders, or excuse me, all the files, including drawings. Uh, now I've already added this folder before. Uh, I want to add it to the vault here. Now this is normally you wouldn't have to do that. If if I created a new folder, if I could just right click new folder and give it a name but I'd done this before the demo and then uh, I had that folder locally then anyway, to get well first of all let's check them in right now they're still checked out by me on that particular computer also we should point out here too that in Windows Explorer you got the ability to to have different columns here that you can then sort them uh, but I want to check in all the files in that in that folder that I have ownership of. So now they're checked in. To get files into the into the system so that saddle so I'll just control select the the saddle part and the drawing and just drop it into the structure folder and now if I open up the tool vice assembly check it out but you'll notice it found the saddle in that subfolder so it found all the files that are needed for this assembly so that was a quick demo with the three different products Let's go back to the PowerPoint uh, so I'll open it up to questions and answers now Okay, no questions, so I guess if you need information about this webinar, have any questions, technical questions, you can contact me, Wayne Matus, Wayne at progressiontech.com or phone number extension 295. If you want to see a demo on any of these products, uh, call the phone number that's extension 1 for sales, or you can go to our website, progressiontech.com, and select the Get Demo. Next webinars. Next webinar is going to be SolidWorks drawings. What's new in SolidWorks drawings in 2015? That's on the 
February 13th, Friday the 13th. Then the one after that is going to be on SolidWorks World 2015 Overview. Uh, Jeremy Colvin is going to SolidWorks World and he's going to present an overview of what happened at SolidWorks World. Again, thank you for attending and we'll see you next week.